So we were really um, proud of this idea. We set it up. I uh, had about 50 shipping containers rolled in one early uh, November um, 2001. And um, got in about three months, and Berkeley decided they weren't particularly excited about this idea because there wasn't any paper that was associated with it. So um, we thought that we, we, read the, we read the zoning and code stuff, and we thought we could slide it in as a, as a temporary building, as a construction type scenario. And they decided that we were, our real intent was perm permanent buildings with um, real habitation and um, we were, we were um, uh, in fundamental error in, in basic, basically all possible ways they could figure out. So their response was to shut off the power. Um, so three months into our fantastic art experiment, we suddenly didn't have power. Um, and we decided that we were going to continue. That started a, about a seven year um, journey of, of power engineering. Um, we ended up building an off grid power system here that we ran this facility. Actually, we ran we were off grid for five or six years. We were uh, generating power at a level that we could run all the lathes and mills and welders you see in the other room over here. We were starting uh, 15 horsepower, three phase um, motors um, on a converter battery system. We took a shipping container and made this thing that's called a power tank. Um, we had a, all those batteries you see outside here, a little battery array from it. It's a 17,000 pound battery array out of a, a telecom station. Um, telecom stations all run on the inverter side of a, of a DC battery bank. So if the grid goes up and down, there's nothing to the switch here. So that was the, the largest battery array we could find. It was one of these out of a telecom station. It's, um, each cell is 5,000 ampere hours, um, somewhat larger than your typical battery system. Uh, we, so we had a 48 volt array, 5,000 ampere hours in the shipping container, 33 kW of Santrex inverters all packed to work in three phase. So that was our pool and our, our, our delivery, and then we started you know, experimenting with, well, how are we going to fill this thing? Um, so we had the biodiesel generator and the vegetable oil stuff, we started playing with PV and as many of us here um, got frustrated with the realities of the logistics and economics of actually building structures to provide the sunlight. Sunlight is not a terribly energy dense um, resource. Um, so um, I started looking at the other solar energy system on the planet, which is, of course, plants. Um, we already have a globally installed solar energy system, um, it, it um, conveniently self manufactures. Rather large rates. Um, it is distributed um, without concern for economics. And in fact, it may even be inversely concern, um, distributed in relation to economics, which um, has a variety of uh, pleasing characters to it. Um, the products of this, this already globally installed uh, self manufacturing system is, is our ubiquitous waste on the planet. And I, was, I became fascinated with gasification as. What seemed like a very low hurdle to take all of this solid plant matter, this waste matter, and get it into a form that we could use it in our pre existing energy systems on the planet, which are generally all combustion based devices working on some sort of hydrocarbon. Well, the plants are the living hydrocarbons. Um, they're unfortunately in a solid form, which doesn't well go into the internal combustion engines, but gasification promised this very simple bridge between the two. You can get the branch or the 2x4 or the wood chips out of the solid form, get it into a gaseous fuel, but you can connect this pre-existing solar energy system with the pre-existing industrial system, personal energy system, which are all these largely internal combustion-based devices. So that sounded fantastic. Uh, I had no idea this exists. I, 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 I stumbled across gasification, I think it was four or five years ago, online. That started the tour. So, uh, what was an art facility here is now um, as much an energy facility. Um, All Power Labs started as a um, addendum to the original um, art and tech facility. Uh, it's about to extend into the, the door next door or the bay next door. Here. And in general, we're kind of we're using typical strategies of, of you know, scrappy junkyard artists, which is let's take good ideas. 
figure out pre-existing stuff that exists in the world, reconfigure it expertly, and make it do the stuff that you need it to do without having to buy it off the shelf as a passive consumer. So that's why when we started, when we got to the point that we were interested in bringing this work out, we started with a kit, a hacker's kit. We didn't start with a consumer product. We said, well, we need as much a cultural conversation and a, a, a playful, creative engagement with this stuff. We need that as much as we need in you know, a done product in a black box that you can't see. So um, we've been pleasantly surprised how many people also want to play with gasification and kind of as a, as a early PC hacking culture. Um, it's rapidly. Okay, so that's our basic introduction here. Now I'm going to go through this. Before I do any questions.